Um, in Washington today, we learned about new investigations that are being launched by the Oversight and Judiciary Committees into President Trump. Uh, with the Judiciary Committee chairman saying explicit to, explicitly today that this new inquiry is part of the committee's impeachment investigations into President Trump. And what this is all about um, is this. Did you see this picture this week? Did you notice that when Vice President Pence was on his overseas trip this week, even when he was having big high-level meetings, even when he was meeting, as he is in this picture, with the foreign minister of Ireland, it was kind of a drab look for an event of that stature, right? I mean, it's proper. Everybody's in a suit. There's flags and stuff. But that's like, it's like a big shower curtain behind them. What is that weird room? That's a weird looking shot, right? What's going on in that room? And why does it look familiar? It looks familiar because, oh, it's the same location in front of the same weird shower curtain thingy where President Trump also held a big all for the cameras ceremonial meeting with the Irish prime minister earlier this summer back in June. Now, the reason for this hoopty, sad little setting for these big ceremonial meetings is uh, because this is not the kind of place where meetings between heads of state or meetings between vice presidents and foreign ministers are supposed to happen. What this little room is, is the VIP lounge at the Shannon Airport, which is on the west coast of Ireland. Shannon, Ireland. Shan Shannon, County Clare. Population 9,000 something. It's an unprepossessing little town on Ireland's west coast. It is known mostly for... Well, they have an airport there. That's pretty much what they've got. I mean, to be clear, the Irish government knows what it's doing, right? The Irish government officials are not in the habit of holding meetings with heads of state in dowdy little carpeted airport lounges. That is not a thing they are accustomed to doing. They have plenty of fine and picturesque facilities, you know, you know castles and stuff. <laughs> for doing ceremonial meetings and press conferences and hosting heads of states and, and important discussions. Like they got plenty of nice settings, official settings. But in this U.S. administration, they instead keep having to meet with the top officials in the U.S. government, including the president and the vice president, in the lounge at the Shannon Airport, right by the duty-free station instead of any of those more normal places that would make sense for a government official visit. And the reason this keeps having to happen, the reason they keep getting these photo ops in front of like the plant and the shower curtain and stuff is because the Shannon Airport is very close to President Trump's nearby golf course in Ireland. And in the Trump administration, that is where we, the taxpayers, pay to have the president and the vice president and all the staff and the Secret Service and the entourage and everyone. That's where we, the taxpayers, pay to have them stay. When they go to Ireland, they stay in President Trump's property there. So the money that is spent by U.S. taxpayers on that trip is money that goes into the pocket of the president and his family and goes to the bottom line of their family business. Now, when Mike Pence was staying in Ireland this week, uh, the, the problematic nature of the taxpayers paying for this was made crystal clear by virtue of the fact that in, in order to have taxpayers pay the president's company, to have Mike Pence and his entourage and the Secret Service all stay at the president's golf hotel thing, Pence had to commute back and forth 180 miles each way to the place in Ireland where his actual official meetings were held, which was Dublin, the capital of the country, which is clear on the other side of Ireland. He didn't stay in Dublin. He stayed on the other side of the country. Also, taxpayer funds would go to the president. I mean, this, logistically, this would be the equivalent of me deciding to stay in Worcester, Massachusetts, if I had pressing business to attend to in New York City. And trust me, all hail Worcester, Massachusetts. I got nothing against you. I love you deeply. But honestly, if I personally, if I owned a Rachel Maddow hotel in Worcester, Massachusetts, and I told somebody on the staff of this show that while they were having meetings in New York for this show, they should stay at my hotel in Worcester, Massachusetts and commute back and forth and charge the commute to the company and have the company pay their freight to stay in my hotel. I mean, if I did that, I would be fired. Any of us in any job in the private or public sector would be fired for doing that. But that is what President Trump and Vice President Pence are doing with the president's property in Ireland. 
Uh, and instead of them being fired for it, <laughs> we have A, elections, <laughs> and B, um, we have a Congress that now says they may try to impeach the president for it. Here's today's New York Times report on this new investigation. Quote, two committee chairmen acting in tandem sent letters to the White House, the Secret Service, and the Trump Organization asking for documents and communications related to Vice President Mike Pence's decision to stay this week at Mr. Trump's resort in Ireland during an official visit, as well as Mr. Trump's recent statements promoting Trump National Doral as the possible site for the G7 summit of world leaders next year. In both cases, the Democrats argued, Mr. Trump stands to benefit financially from American taxpayer dollars, and in the case of the potential summit in Doral, from foreign funds as well. The Constitution's emoluments clauses prohibit presidents from accepting any payment from federal, state, or foreign governments beyond their official salary. Quote, the committee does not believe that U.S. taxpayer funds should be used to personally enrich President Trump, his family, and his companies, wrote Congressman Elijah Cummings, chairman of the Oversight Committee. Congressman Jerry Nadler, chair of the Judiciary Committee, raised what could be an even more troubling outcome for the president. He said his committee was considering potential violations of the ban on profiting from the presidency as part of its impeachment investigation. Quote, potential violations of the foreign and domestic emoluments clauses of the Constitution are of grave concern to the committee as it considers whether to recommend articles of impeachment. So the president saying in the last week, was it like a week ago, right? Um, a week or so ago, that when the U.S. hosts the G7 summit next year, he wants that G7 summit to be held at his own Trump property in Florida. So foreign governments would actually be forced to pay money to the president and his family in order to participate in official diplomatic engagements with the U.S. government. I mean, there's that. There's also the vice president diverting his official business by hundreds of miles to make sure the taxpayer money expended on his trip would go into the president's own pocket. I mean, these things have just happened back to back within the course of a week. This is a kind of neon sign for what counts as an impeachable offense, right? But I think an underappreciated part of this is that this is also kind of a cash for clunkers program. Because that Doral place uh, where the president is trying to make the U.S. government put the G7 summit, that is a property that used to be the president's largest source of revenue in his whole business world. And that property is now tanking. Quote, Trump has listed Doral in federal disclosures as his biggest moneymaker. But hotel room rates, banquets, golf and overall revenue are all down. In two years, the resort's net operating income fell by 69%. Even in a vigorous economy, the property was missing the Trump Organization's internal business targets. The company's own tax consultant telling county officials that the Doral Resort is, quote, severely underperforming other resorts in the area. Quote, there is some negative connotation that is associated with the brand now. Oh, the brand. Um, same situation, apparently, in the Ireland property to which they have been diverting taxpayer resources. The, the, the Ireland property is also tanking. Uh, as you see in the headline there, Dunbeg, Trump's money-losing golf course. He bought this thing in 2014. It has lost at least seven figures every year since, which we can see from public records filed in Ireland. So, I mean, cash for clunkers, right? This... This president gig might not last all that long, but if you can make it work while you've got the job, if you can literally take millions of dollars from U.S. taxpayers to stuff into the coffers of your failing business, if you can force foreign governments to pay millions of dollars to your failing business, then maybe at least you can squeeze some personal profit out of the gig before you lose the gig. And, you know, Democrats have made noise about a lot of things this president has done. We will see if they actually try to go to the distance on this one. Um, they are formally making inquiries into this diversion of taxpayer resources to the president's own businesses uh, as it pertains to the request to hold Doral at G7 and the sending of Mike Pence to the west coast of Ireland instead of to Dublin. I mean, this one, we'll see what the Democrats do with it. This one at least has the benefit of 100 percent clarity in terms of the unconstitutional nature of the president's behavior. I will also say, because the Ireland part of this inquiry also puts Vice President Pence on the block in terms of his active and knowing participation in this Trump grift against the American taxpayer, um, this investigation also potentially has the chance to sort of find the seam 
to find any potential friction between the president and the vice president, who at this point in their political careers might be thinking very differently about how their futures are going to go from here on out and how, in fact, they might diverge. But now, um, <laughs> as I was prepping to talk about something totally different on tonight's show, uh, another story broke along these same lines, which, I mean, this is just, this is the part of the evening where the, I get to the thing that's just truly bonkers. This story just came out within the last hour. Um, if you have not seen it yet, you are going to want to sit down. You are going to want to spend a little bit of time with this. This is the headline just out from Politico tonight. Air Force crew made an odd stop on a routine trip. Trump's Scottish resort. Quote, in early spring of this year, an Air National Guard crew made a routine trip from the U.S. to Kuwait to deliver supplies. What wasn't routine was where the crew stopped along the way. They stopped at President Trump's Turnbury Resort, about 50 miles outside Glasgow, Scotland. Since April, the House Oversight Committee has been investigating why the crew on this C-17 military transport plane made the unusual stay both en route to the Middle East and on the way back at the President's Scottish Resort. They stopped at Turnbury both ways. This congressional committee is investigating this as previously unreported news that this is something that's being looked into by Congress. Since they have been looking into it since April, they have yet to receive any answers from the Pentagon. Quote, on previous trips to the Middle East, this C-17 had landed at U.S. air bases, such as the Ramstein Air Base in Germany or the naval air station called Rota in Spain, to refuel. Occasionally, the same C-17 would also stop at military bases in the Azores or in Italy. But stopping in Scotland? A senior Air Force official said choosing to refuel at the airport nearest to the President's Scotland resort and choosing for the airmen to stay at the President's Scotland resort a half an hour away from that airport, that would be unusual for such a mission. Again, their mission is flying supplies to and from Kuwait. Quote, typically, air crew, the official said, air crews stay on a military base while in transit or at nearby lodgings. The congressional inquiry is part of a broader, previously unreported probe into U.S. military expenditures at and around the Trump property in Scotland. According to a letter the panel sent to the Pentagon in June, the military has spent $11 million on fuel at, specifically, the Prestwick Airport, which is the closest airport to Trump Turnberry. They've spent $11 million on fuel there just since October 2017. And yes, it would be cheaper to the military if that fuel had been purchased at a U.S. military base. And again, a U.S. military base is where these C-17s have always previously stopped before Donald Trump became president and suddenly they started stopping at his golf course and its nearby airport, which turns out has fallen on hard times and might need the money. Prestwick Airport has long been debt-ridden. The Scottish government bought it in 2013 for one pound but the airport has continued to lose money in the years since. In June, the Scottish government announced its intent to sell the airport, which the panel's letter described as integral to the success of the Turnberry property 30 miles away. Taken together, the incidents raised the possibility that the military has helped keep Donald Trump's Turnberry resort afloat. The property lost $4.5 million in 2017, but in 2018, revenue went up by $3 million. I mean, this is just, <laughs> I mean, the implication in this brand new reporting tonight from Politico is that Trump's, you know, got this money losing resort in Florida to which he now wants to direct the G7. He's got this money losing golf resort in Ireland to which he has already directed Vice President Pence and his entourage, not only himself and his own entourage on his own previous trip to Ireland. But now, in addition, he's got this money losing golf resort in Scotland that was about to lose the money-losing airport that serviced it. I mean, the golf course is already having really tough times. If they lose the nearest airport, too, but now, miraculously, now that Donald Trump is president, American military cargo planes have started refueling at that airport at a significant price markup, right? It's much cheaper for them to get their fuel at military bases. That's part of the reason they always stop at military bases. Also, they're the military. They're no longer stopping at military bases. Instead, they're stopping at the airport that Trump needs to prop up in order to keep his Scottish golf resort going, and they are paying full freight commercial, air, commercial airport rates for that fuel. 
And then they're sending the air crews to go stay at the president's resort. I mean, there is a U.S. military base in the U.K. <laughs> if they need to stop in the U.K., they could go to the U.S. base in the U.K. But no, instead, they're going to the commercial airport that Trump needs to keep alive that's otherwise maybe going to go out of business because they need that airport, presumably, to keep afloat his nearby golf resort, which might also be going out of business. Unless you can funnel taxpayer money into it somehow. I mean, not to put a fine a point, put that fine a point on it, but it is bad enough when the vice president goes 180 miles out of his way to put taxpayer money directly into the president's pocket. But if the U.S. military is being used to prop up one of the president's troubled properties, A, this is uncharted waters, obviously, in terms of presidential corruption. B, this implicates the president himself, obviously, and everybody else who participated in it. But this part, of this Scotland part of it with the C-17s flying into that weird little airport outside Glasgow, this implicates the military, who apparently went along with this, didn't peep about it, and now isn't cooperating with congressional oversight committees that are trying to investigate it. If the U.S. military is like in on it now and has no compunction about going along with a scheme like this when they know how weird it is because they know these C-17s flying to Kuwait from Alaska have never done anything like this before, that tells us that one of the sort of red lines we thought, would, we thought we'd have in terms of accountability and people blowing the whistle, one of those red lines in terms of the U.S. military and its integrity uh, is also implicated here. Joining us now is Natasha Bertrand, national security correspondent for Politico, who broke this story tonight along with Brian Bender. Uh, Natasha, I really appreciate you being here on very short notice tonight. This story just came out. Thanks for rushing to the studio. Of course. Thanks for having me. First, let me ask you if I uh, summed that up accurately. I'm just absorbing it myself. It's just come out. Um, tell me if I got anything wrong. No, that was absolutely perfect. I mean, I think we at Politico were still trying to absorb it as we finished the story. I mean, it was just probably one of the most remarkably brazen, um, you know, instances of this kind of self-dealing and grift that we've seen in the Trump era. What was really remarkable, though, I think, is, is what we reported about the crew's reaction itself. The crew were so kind of confused by what was happening when they were rerouted to, to Scotland to refuel at this tiny airport outside of Trump Turnberry because they had never actually done that before in the 50 plus trips that they had taken internationally to do these kinds of routine, you know, uh, supplies trips. They had never stopped in Scotland. It was always in Spain or Germany and if needed, you know, in Italy. But to stop in Scotland was strange enough. And then for them to drive another, you know, 30 miles to Trump's Turnberry Resort, they didn't have enough money. I mean, their per diem allowance didn't even allow them to buy food and drinks there. They felt totally out of place because they weren't wearing the proper clothes. I mean, these are the things that we were told about their reaction. And I think it just really drives home how strange this was. Now, I don't know anything about how much it costs to fill up a C-17. Um, I don't know how big the gas tank is. I don't know how much they pay per gallon. Um, but it struck me that that's a very large number. Um, $11 million on fuel at that one airport. Do, do we know how many refueling stops might be implicated in an $11 million fuel bill? You know, that's a great question. We don't know that. And we also know from the House Oversight Committee that they've received similar reports about this kind of behavior by the military going to, uh, you know, spending money in and around Trump's resorts that they have been investigating. They wouldn't give us any more detail on that, but they did say that this incident that we described to them and that they have been investigating is not isolated. Hmm. So it wouldn't necessarily be surprising if these refueling stops at places outside of U.S. military bases, where, of course, the, the fuel is actually cheaper, were happening with more frequency. And in this case, potentially propping up an airport that might otherwise close, which would be a devastating economic, which would have a devastating economic impact on the president's nearby property. I mean, it's just, it rings like a bell. Um, let me just ask you one last piece of this, Natasha. It, one of the seemingly very serious things here to me is that, according to your sources, the U.S. military is not cooperating with the oversight committees as they've been trying to investigate this. They haven't been able to obtain material. They haven't been able to get documents. The Pentagon is not commenting on any of this. Uh, in your story, you say that the committee is, is considering um, alternate, alternative steps 
um, in terms of getting material from the military on this if the Pentagon continues not cooperating. Do you know what that means? Is that a subpoena threat? Or do we know what else the committee is going to try to do to investigate this? We've asked for more information about that. Our read on that was that it was going to be a subpoena and that it could come as soon as next week, the end of next week. So we're waiting to see. But they did send this letter back in June when act then Acting Defense Secretary Pat Shanahan was still there and they never got a response. And they still, months later, have still not gotten any documents from the Pentagon explaining what is going on. Natasha Bertrand, national security correspondent for Politico.com, with just this incredible scoop tonight, along with the co-author Brian Bender. Again, the, t the headline, Air Force crew made an odd stop on a routine trip, Trump's Scottish resort. Just remarkable reporting. Thanks for hustling to the studio to help us understand. Thank you so much, Rachel. All right. This is just, it is just incredible. Um, in terms of thinking about the geography, so, you know, Glasgow, obviously one of the major cities in Scotland, you know, Edinburgh, Glasgow. There is a main Glasgow airport, which is right next to the city of Glasgow. This other airport that we're talking about is called Glasgow Prestwick Airport, and they put the name Glasgow on it. It's actually like 30 miles outside town. It's easy to understand why that airport, which is sort of on the coast away from everything and certainly away from the center of Glasgow, might be in economic distress. And it has been in economic distress for years. The idea that under Trump, the U.S. military is flying into that little out-of-the-way airport that is basically otherwise going to close and spending $11 million in fuel there at that airport to prop it up because that's the airport that services his golf course? I mean, honestly, if this were fiction, you would walk out. You would walk out because this is too blunt. Just incredible. We'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.